Welcome back to Miss Clark Does Science. Last time we were looking at diffusion as an example of movement across cell membranes. Today we're going to be moving on to osmosis and the involvement of water. Okay, so the next way that things can move in and out of cells is through something called osmosis. And osmosis is the diffusion of water through a selectively permeable membrane from a region of high water concentration to low water concentration. The key word here is clearly water. Okay, this osmosis is only the movement of water. Okay, nothing else. It is the movement of water. It's basically the same as diffusion, but with water. It's literally going from high water concentration to low water concentration. So it's still going down this gradient, but only for water. Okay, nothing else. And that is the key here. So you can see here we have a selectively permeable membrane with tiny little gaps in the middle. And these are how big our water molecules are compared to our solute molecule. Solute just means something that's been dissolved. So maybe something like starch. Okay, starch, like we said before, is not going to fit through, but water will. Now I can see just by looking at these two sides that this is where there is the least water and the most solute or starch. So this water is then going to move across to rebalance this this equilibrium here and that's what this arrow is on about here net movement of water goes to the right so left to right to fix this imbalance here there are loads of ways that you can say this rather than just going from high to low water concentration they can talk about the solute so they can say it's a dilute solution over here like dilute squash and this over here is concentrated squash they could say it's a low concentration of the solute over here because there are one two three four solute molecules and there's lots more over here they could say it's a high concentration of water to low which is what we're used to seeing that makes most sense okay because we're talking about water they could also talk about water potential that's verging on to a level but just know that if it's a high water potential there's a higher concentration of water in that area and they can also talk about osmotic pressure okay but there are loads of different ways of saying it, but ultimately it is all about water. And if you remember that you just treat it the same as diffusion, but just focus on the water molecules, you'll be fine. So a way that you can demonstrate this osmosis then is you can do a practical involving potatoes, which you might have done in school. It isn't the most exciting practical, but it does demonstrate osmosis quite nicely. So what you do is you use a knife and you cut up strips of potato and then you have these test tubes here with different solutions of basically squash in them. So a sugar solution. So over here we have 100 percent. You can't really see it very clearly. We then go down to 80, then 60, and it goes down in 20% intervals, then all the way down to 0%, so just water. So what you do is you cut up these potato strips, you weigh them first, so you get an initial reading, so you get a before weight, and then you put them into the test tubes. So you put your little strips of potato, you can see they've already done them here, into these solutions for about 15 minutes. And then after that, you dry them off with a bit of cloth and then you get an after weight. So you weigh them again. And what you should see is the potato will change weight. OK, and what's happening is it's because of the water movement in the potato and in the squash. So you might see a graph looking a bit like this. Excuse me for my non ruler graph, which is very bad. And you might see like a uh, percentage percentage uh, weight change. And you might have positive values up here, say 10, 20 percent change, 30 percent change, and you'll get negative ones down the other side. So here you'd have it in percentages. So they've done uh, naught over here. They've done 20, 40, 60, 80 and 100. And what you might see usually is the potato that is in a naught percent solute. So lots of water in there water will go into the potato because of the concentration so you might get a big percentage change of growth increased percentage change of weight for the potato and then it would gradually decrease down to a level where it's actually losing weight so in our 100 percent squash solution the potato would actually lose some of its weight to the squash solution because that's where the water movement would go because it's from high water to low water so that means that potatoes have a bit of water in them already, but if you put them in a really concentrated solution, that water will then move out into the solution rather than staying in the potato. Whereas if you put it in a 0% solution, so just water, the water will go into the potato, making it increase in volume. Okay? 
So you'd end up with a graph that looks something like this. Probably not quite as neat and amazing as that. Okay, so now that we've covered osmosis, the next video is going to be a higher tier video. So it's going to be looking at active transport. Now this is something that is only needed for higher. So if you're not doing higher, if you're doing foundation, skip this video and move on to the next one.